Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Podcast. Today with us, we have Carrie E. Gray. She's CEO at Alternacare Foundation. She's also the founder there. She's a talk show host. It's not her first business. She started First Choice Funding in 2003. And we're going to discuss about health. We're going to discuss about fixing this uh, health system that is not optimal uh, for many reasons. We're going to talk about wellness, memberships, crowdfunding, and holistic health, everything in between. This pod is presented to you by podfire.com. If you want to start your own podcast, scale your own podcast, you can go to podfire.com. We help you monetize the unconventional way. Carrie, welcome to the pod. Glad to have you on. Tell me a bit more about yourself and what you're up to now. Well, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share my story with your audience and all the amazing things that we're doing. Um, so where would you like to start? Do uh, you want to talk about the past or do you want to talk about the present? Start with your story. Talk with my story? Okay. Well, I really start my story with what happened when I was 25 years old. I call it, it's when life throws you off on the deep end. And I went to my doctor for a physical, and within a few visits, I came away with a terminal liver cancer diagnosis. Um, at that point, I knew nothing about health, but I did know the power of prayer. So praying uh, gave me the direction that I needed, and it wasn't into the conventional medicine space, who basically told me to make funeral arrangements. But with the um, holistic approach, I was given the first voice of hope and I was very thrilled. So I was a very dedicated student to everything my health practitioner was guiding and coaching me through. And it took a lot of change on my say, but within months I was a miracle and it really changed the trajectory of my life. Um, and for many years uh, after I really wanted to pay it forward and I didn't really know how to. Um, and so what I did was I just, did health coaching for free. I just thought if I can at least do that, you know, when you get a second chance at life, that's a big milestone that a lot of people don't get. So it really changes you in a way that you see life very differently from that point out. And I think it's a, it makes you a better person because of it, because you really recognize that we are all just a gift to each other. And if we can just see one another, not as an opportunity to exploit each other, but to really help and empower one another, uh, you know, we would really, we can really make a big difference that way in, li in the lives of other people. So that's my start. That's how I started on this journey. And I have spent um, probably the last 12 years uh, very dedicated to my health education. And um, as a researcher, I came from the insurance space. So I know something about that industry a, a lot, actually. And, um, and that's the reason why I'm taking all of that knowledge um, in my past to really pay it forward today and to do something that is uh, truly dynamic. Right. How did you get back to health at 25? What changes in your life did you implement to fight that cancer diagnosis? Well, that's a great question. And, um, you know, the answer is I had to first start with getting health educated as nothing changes if nothing changes. Right. And so you have to know what got you there in order to understand how to leave that area. Right. Leave that diagnosis. So my um, health practitioner recommended some books that I needed to read, which the first one that I read was called um, The Yeast Connection. And it really helped me to understand how set up we are by the medical industrial complex. That's what I call it, the Rockefeller medicine. We're really set up for failure because they use things like antibiotics. And at back in the 80s, that's when this all happened. You know, it was every time you went to the doctor, you got another antibiotic prescription. And so it really destroys the immune system, which today is called the microbiome. And so that was one of the first things that I had to address was that the yeast um, are present in our immune, are in our body, just like bacteria and viruses and all these other microbes are. However, when we're taking birth control pills, uh, drinking chlorinated water, living a high stress life, 
um, taking antibiotics. Like there's a list of things that really push the envelope so that it gives yeast an unfair advantage. Um, and, and that's what antibiotics do is they, they kind of like are sending like an atomic bomb into the immune system and they get rid of all the good bacteria or maybe something that's a virus and it didn't even affect the virus. But now there's this unfair advantage that the yeast have who are opportunists. And uh, so they take over. And that was one of the big takeaways that I learned. And, and it, that book overwhelmed me so much with all the changes that I needed to make in my diet and my lifestyle, my stress and all those kinds of things that I had to read it three times just to start finding the courage within me to, to make those changes. But that was the beginning. Um, and then it was, you know, implementing what I was learning. So it was toxin reduction, it was stress reduction. Um, it was obviously uh, nutrient uh, uptake, right? And, uh, you know, getting rid of the bad food and incorporating a good, healthy diet. Um, and like I say, and then the toxin exposure, I had a lot of toxins that I was exposed to and the liver is the filter to the whole body. So everything that was on my skin, I was, or drinking or eating, my liver was having to filter. So I had to reduce all of those. But what was interesting, Charles, is that even after all of that uh, very uh, dedicated um, elimination or modification of my lifestyle, I still didn't have the answer. And it wasn't until uh, she recommended that I go to a different practitioner who worked specifically on emotional trauma. And it was when I worked on the emotional trauma that's when I got remission. So what I came to find out from my own personal experience is that cancer actually starts with emotions. And uh, so when there's emotional trauma uh, today, those are called ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. When those traumas are never resolved, they are a set up for fail, just like the over prescription of antibiotics is. So it's it's really cancer is like a culmination of a lot of things that are wrong. And it basically is like, it creates the tipping point so that the immune system can no longer um, protect us because that's its job is to protect us and keep us alive. So is it just about seeing a therapist and talking about these things and externalizing these emotions like me as a man sometimes i have problems expressing that you know so how should i uh break down that barrier well that's a great question and the answer actually because most people when they go into like a talk therapy sometimes what they find is they're re-traumatized by having to relive things and what they also find is that it can take years and actually what my therapist did it was called emotional clearing and it was combining, so if, you're, if your viewers and listeners are, are familiar with some of these modalities, they're a little more common today. Back when I was doing it, it was unheard of <laughs> anyways, because I was like, what is this? But um, it was using what's called kinesiology. So kinesiology is testing of the energy. So if you think of the body as electrical, because it is, and, and realize that when there is a um, electrical lull or a or a um, a disruption in the electrical field, the body goes weak at that point. And so um, practitioners might use the arm like this in a resistance. They might use the leg. We use fingers. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways of doing this, right? But the bottom line is what it, what he was able to do with his training. He was able to identify the organ that the emotion was in, what the emotion was, what the event was that caused the trauma, and what age I was when it happened. So that really, like when we did that, that got to things fast. And within just a few visits, I was like, you know, I didn't realize the impact this was going to make, but I went to a few times, maybe I'll say four at the most. And then I happened to just go back to my MD. Um, I just wanted to test. I didn't even know if I was making any progress. And this had been probably about eight months since my diagnosis. What was interesting was my doctor was shocked I was alive. Then uh, that was followed by my own shock when I tried to tell her what I was doing and she refused. I mean, fake hands in the face, stop, I don't want to hear it, telling me very clearly she was not interested. And then they redid the, the blood work. 
And her warning to me was, you need to get your final arrangements together. So I got the double warning of making final arrangements. And um, within a week when my blood work came back and she saw the test results, she said, I don't want to know what you've been doing, but I'm just going to tell you this. The liver does not do this by itself. Congratulations, you're cancer free. And as she tried to escape from me, I was like, wait a second. Are you telling me that I'm a miracle? And she said, yeah, that's basically what I'm telling you. And then she she quickly got away from me because she did not want to hear what I was doing. And like I say, so I really attribute that success to not just one thing, but it was a lot of the right things. And what it did was it gave my body a chance to regenerate, which the body is always in a state of regeneration if we'll just work with it. Right. And how can you help the body to be in that state of regeneration, keeping your stress levels down, dealing with your traumas, I guess? Um, food is a big one too. Physical activity, like what does your routine look like now? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, living as clean as you possibly can. I mean, that's really what it has to start with because, um, you know, you can't, uh, the, the Bible says that we are the temple of the living God. And I love that scripture because it really helps me to see how important it is to keep the temple clean. And, you know, when you think about just the term junk food, okay, where does junk go? When we think of junk, we say, oh, that goes in the trash. So I don't treat my body like a trash can. I treat my body like a temple. And it really helps me to think about the decisions that I'm making. So I want pure drinking water. I want the purest air I can have. I want obviously the purest food I can eat. Um, you know, and I, uh, you know, keep my emotions in check. I don't allow myself. Um, I've worked very hard to learn how to, um, I would say, manage my emotions so that you know strong emotions of anger or um resentment or uh guilt or shame you know all these are what they call very low frequency emotions so recognizing that these you know things like cancer um which is a low frequency disease these diseases um manifest when we are um holding on to negative things or we're poisoning ourselves with toxin overload because one of the things that's happening to us all the time is we are bio accumulating toxins and so that's why it's so important to be clean because if you've ever had a dirty house you know that you can't clean your house with something dirty you've got to have clean things to clean the house and what's really important one of the things that I spent many years not really understanding or appreciating the value of is how important sleep is we have to have regenerative sleep. One, one, one um, fact that I recently uh, came across in, in the recent past that I came across that I thought was so amazing. And that was uh, uh, Barbara O'Neill, if any of your listeners ever know who she is, she's, she's got some amazing information. But one of the things that she shares is, is that when we learn something like forgiveness, right? When we, when we practice forgiveness, what happens to our brain every night when we sleep is is that it basically, it gets cleaned out of all of the, the toxins that accumulate in the brain. So, you know, these are just all of those, like, it's not just one thing, thing, you know, it's like a whole lifestyle. So that's why I call it living prevention, not prescription. And at 61 years old, I'm proud to say that I am prescription free, uh, not because I think prescriptions are wrong, but because for me, they're not the right fit. And I am going to do everything I can to stay away from as long as I possibly can. So that's my, that's my lifestyle choice. And how is the current system setting us up for failure health-wise nowadays? Can you, sorry, you're, it cut out a little bit. Can you say it again? How is the current health system setting us up for oh. failure? <laughs> well, how's the current well, there's a long list of ways. Um, first of them is telling us lies. You know, there's been a, um, a new term that's come into our vernacular and it's called misinformation, which is AKA the word for lying. And, you know, um, while there was a huge push, we'll say, from social media to stifle misinformation when people were, you know, sharing 
something that was not part of a narrative of a few years ago. There's another side to that coin that most people don't realize, and that is all the medical misinformation that is promoted. And I'm not blaming doctors, so it's not an attack on people. It's an attack on the institution of, of pharmaceuticals and the attack on big medicine and big food and all these multinational corporations who are really ultimately running the show. And um, they're telling people a lot of things that are not true and they're not healthy. And, and just as an example, I'll just use one. Um, and that is uh, cholesterol. Cholesterol has been made to be the bad guy. And what most people don't understand is the body produces 80% of the cholesterol and our brain needs cholesterol in order for us not to have dementia and Alzheimer's. So, you know, for them to be promoting billions of dollars of cholesterol blocking drugs that don't stop people from having heart attacks and then create dementia, Alzheimer's and all the cascade of brain disorders, that's really, that's really very nefarious in my opinion. Um, that's just one example, but there are so many that that's why we're having, um, and if it's okay, if I talk about this right now, we're having an event um, and it's not even going to be enough time to even, you know, go through all of the things, but, but we're having an event, um, April 1st, and it's called not fooling me with medical misinformation. And, and really what we're going to do is we're going to tackle a lot of the topics, uh, Cholesterol is one of them, but there are so many others. Salt, uh, you know, um, antibiotics, um, you know, chemo and radiation. Like there's so many mammograms. There's just so many topics um, that are taught as medicine that really are poison. And it's time people really have a chance to know what the other side of the toxic load that they create is. So what are you doing nowadays to fight against that? To fight against what? Against that, the whole health system. What are you right. doing on your side? Well, you know, the first thing, like in my own journey, nothing changes unless we're educated. So this is why we're hosting this webathon, um, because we want to give people a um, opportunity to have advocacy right and so that's what's that's where it really starts you will never make other changes if you don't know them you can't choose better until you learn better and you know while we're all trying to make the best choices that we can with what we know we can make better choices when we know better and so that's really what we're doing and 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 as a part of that like giving people the empowerment that they have been denied um is to then build a community and our community is going to be a safe space so that people can have the ability to not have censored education, but to really have both sides. In order to truly make an informed decision, you have to be informed. And so that's really part of our, um, our mission, as we say at Alternacare, is to... Um, it's part of our health reinvented mission, which is to teach people, to empower them to live prevention, not prescription. That's lifestyle medicine. And it's far more efficacious than um, any prescription, just as, a, just as a point of reference. Uh, recently, I heard that the most effective prescription is 13%. So I'll say if it's 13 or 20%, whereas lifestyle is 80% up to 90%. So there is a huge empowerment that we all have that we have not ever been taught. And there's a reason because the money's made in us not knowing, but let's shift that. Let's, let's take this and create a new era. I call it the not fooling me anymore era. And, um, and, and it starts with prioritizing health education. Love that, Carrie. Well, where can people find out more about you and your company? Thank you. Well, um, our, our, our organization is alternacare.org. So A-L-T-E-R-N-A-C-A-R-E dot O-R-G. Um, our media is livingpreventiontv.com. So you can find, you can connect with us on either site. 
Um, but we're basically here to help people. We're here to create a, a movement of, of people who are ready to stop trusting blindly the system that has not got our interest at heart and is completely um, um, doing what it can to monetize our illness for as long as it can. And, you know, Charles, there's one statistic that I just want to share that for, for me is it defines every reason why I do what I do. And that is that children of today are now predicted, and this is the first time in history, they are now predicted to not outlive their parents. That is something we can change. That does not have to be uh, our outcome. It's only our outcome if we don't change the current trajectory. So we can't change the system, but you know what we can do? We stop feeding the system with our money. That's how you create corporate changed behavior when you stop putting the system with your money. And, and that's the that's the most powerful vote that anyone has. It, it, politics is not where the power is. The power is in how you spend your money.